Hello everybody, how you doing? This is Mr. Dallas, and in this video I'm going to discuss how to find the coordinates of an endpoint on a number line on midpoint problems. Uh, that's a long little statement there, but ultimately what's happening here is I'm giving you a number line, meaning we're only using the x-axis here or the y-axis or you know we're, we're only going in one direction left to right. Uh, and we uh, are given an endpoint, we're given the midpoint, but we don't know uh, the second endpoint. Uh, generally, on midpoint problems, you're given both of the endpoints, and it's your goal to find the midpoint. Well, this is changing a little bit, making it a little bit more difficult, in my opinion. Uh, we're giving you one endpoint. We're giving you the midpoint between these two endpoints, but we don't know the exact location of the second endpoint here. Uh, and so I'm going to show you uh, two different ways of finding this using a couple examples. First of all, we can find a pattern between the two known points. Like, we know the location of point A here. We know the location of the midpoint M here. Uh, and so we know that the midpoint is going to be the same distance from both endpoints. So we can find a pattern from A to M, and we can use that pattern. Uh, we can apply that pattern to the midpoint to find the other endpoint. And again, we know the general location, but this will give us the exact location. This is a fairly easy way of solving uh, these kind of problems. But what if the endpoint was much further away from the endpoint? Uh, then it might take forever to do it that way. And so there's another way, which is a little bit more challenging because it requires a little bit more math. Uh, you can, we can use the midpoint formula to figure out what the unknown endpoint is going to be. And I'm going to show you both ways of doing this. Uh, you're probably going to use this way more often than, than, than the second sol uh, solution method. Uh, but again, it's worth knowing both ways. Uh, depending on what your teacher requires of you. Uh, so here's the first example. Uh, find endpoint B if the other endpoint A is located at negative 4 and the midpoint M is located at 1 on the number line. And so they're giving us the location of one of the endpoints here. We know this guy is negative 4. We can even figure that out without even having to look up at this little statement here. We also know this midpoint is at a uh, positive 1. Uh, and then Oftentimes, my students will read this problem here, and they will automatically just go, well, we're given the endpoint here, we're given the endpoint here, and my goal is to find the midpoint somewhere in the middle here. They rush the problem, and they miss the, what's happening here. This is improper. We are given an endpoint here. We're given the midpoint, but we do not know the other endpoint. We know the midpoint's got to be in between the two endpoints, so it's fair to say that the other endpoint is somewhere in this location, but I'm not quite sure where. And that's where the pattern method comes in. We need to find a pattern between A and M. I know the distance between A and M is going to be the same distance from M to B. I know, because M is in the middle of those two points. So the distance has to be the same. So I'm going to find the pattern here. Well, let's see here. What is the distance from A to M? Well, we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And if I apply the same pattern from M to B, I will know exactly where B is going to be. So if I go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, I know that B has got to be right here. It's got to be right here in this location. I'm going to make that guy black, but I'm going to make the dot here red. And we know that B is located at 6 on the number line. Pretty straightforward, pretty easy. Again, the pattern here of 5, it's going to be the same pattern from M to B, and so this has to be the right answer. But let me show you the other way. Let me show you how to use the midpoint formula. Now, I am using just the x-axis here. So I don't have any y-coordinates, so I can ignore the y portion of the y-axis. This x of M is the location of the midpoint. Well, we know the location of the midpoint here is 1. I'm going to change colors here to make it stand out. So we know this guy right here is going to be x sub m. That's the midpoint. Now this x sub 1 and x sub 2, well a is going to be x sub 1 and b, and keep in mind I don't know the answer of 6 right now. I'm ignoring what I did with this number line. We're going to call b x sub 2. Well we know what x sub 1 is. It's negative 4. We've got a plus sign in this equation. x sub 2 we don't know. And we have to divide all this by 2. And so we can figure out the math from here. 
Now, how do you cancel out a number, uh, a denominator? The denominator is the bottom uh, number on the fraction. Well, if we multiply both sides by the denominator, it'll cancel out the denominator. And so this becomes uh, 2 times 1 is 2 equals negative uh, 4 plus x sub 2. And we don't know, we, I mean, this, these 2's cancel out right now. And so let me move this screen down a little bit here. And so we've canceled out the denominators. And from here, my goal is to get x sub 2 by itself. And the way to do that is, is I need to cancel out this negative 4 by adding 4 to both sides. And you're going to see that 6 is equal to x sub 2. And that is the exact answer that we got using the pattern method. Now, so again, we know this is going to be 6. It's going to be the answer for b. Now, again, the second solution method that I'm doing right now, you don't always need to use. But what if your teacher asks you to solve this problem using this method here? Uh, the pattern is not going to give you what you need. It'll get you the answer, but if I were to ask my students using the midpoint formula, find the unknown endpoint, they would have to show work to get uh, the full credit on the problem. So that might be why you need to know this. Now let's do one more problem here, and then we'll call it quits on this video. It says find the endpoint D if the given endpoint C, uh, sorry, if given endpoint C and midpoint G. So we know a couple things here. We know C is an endpoint, so I'm going to put an E above it. This might be something you want to do on these problems. We know uh, G is the midpoint, and we need to find the other endpoint. Now I know it's going to be somewhere over here, but I'm not quite sure. But the other endpoint is going to be over here because the midpoint's got to be between the two endpoints. I'm going to solve this using this uh, second solution method, and then I'll double check it using the pattern method. Uh, again, so we have only the x axes here, so I'm going to ignore y sub m. And my goal is to figure out uh, what the other endpoint is. And so I'm going to call c x sub 1. We know the midpoint here, it's, this is going to be x sub m. And we don't know this endpoint, but it's going to be somewhere over here. I don't know what that is right now. Well, we know x sub 1 is negative 10. What is x sub m? Well, this is a 0, negative 1, negative 2. And again, we don't know what this guy is right now. So let's solve the problem. Uh, the midpoint of x, x sub m, is going to be a negative 2 equals uh, x sub 1 is a negative 10 plus, and I don't know what x sub 2 is, so I'm going to leave that guy as x sub 2, and all that divided by 2. Now again, to cancel out the denominator, we need to multiply both sides by what the denominator is. So I'm going to multiply both sides by 2. And 2 times a negative 2 uh, gets me negative 4. Uh, these two are going to cancel out, and so we're going to be stuck with just a negative 10 plus x sub 2. Let me move this down a little bit. Uh, now from here, how do we cancel out this negative 10 to get x sub 2 by itself? We need to add 10 to both sides. And we get 6 equals x sub 2. Well, this is just a coincidence. Both the answers on both these uh, problems are going to be 6, apparently. Uh, so we know right now that this other endpoint here, this is going to be D. So we know that D is going to be located at 6. Let's do the pattern method just to double check to make sure that we did this properly. So let's just leave that down. Um, so the pattern here, what's the pattern between C and G? Well, we go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So if I apply that same pattern to G, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, we get that the other endpoint that we don't know, D, is equal to 6. So it looks like both ways, we get 6 as the answer. So hopefully this helps you understand how to find uh, a missing endpoint when dealing with midpoint problems. Anyways, I hope you have a good day. Bye-bye.